Well, you weren't taking a day off on promos. Here is you and Oli on December 14th on worldwide tag team champions, Oli and Aaron Anderson, Mr. Anderson, you have you a very, it's really necessary to introduce us. You think it's really necessary to tell everybody out there that's watching the millions of people it's really necessary to tell them that we're the Andersons, that yes. we're the national tag team champions. Yes. Why? Because every time every time you get choked up shows, no. well when you you're around a couple come. of great ones i see you can talk to dusty Rhodes, no problem maybe subconsciously you know we're just better than dusty Rhodes. maybe subconsciously all these people know that they talk about dusty Rhodes. i hear him chant their name and holler i listen to him right. holler for magnum ta i listen to him holler for the <laughs> three really to beat up on dusty Rhodes, right it Didn't doesn't take three. that but it sure is fun How's that for size? It doesn't take that. It's just that he's always got so many people around him, weasels like you and a few others. Jimmy Crockett, always hiding behind Bob Geidel, always hiding behind the National Wrestling Alliance, Wait, always hiding who behind, hit the behind Bob Geigel this time. Rick Dusty Blair. Rhodes does. Rick Blair Dusty did. Rhodes does. Magnum TA does. Rock and Roll Express does. They all want to hide. They all. Shh, Rick Flair. Let me tell you, I mentioned it before. Rick Flair is the world's heavyweight champion, NWA heavyweight champion. There's anything better. Now you might have some champion over in dog patch. You might have some champion down in some town in the South Carolina someplace, maybe uh, East Charleston, but you're only talking about one world heavyweight champion, NWA heavyweight champion, right. and that's Ric Flair. That's it. Just like we're the only national tag team champions. Go name ahead. anybody you want to name, and they're also Rans. They're not even second. They're not even third. They're somewhere down around 19 and 20 when they start counting. Tell them. I'm going to lay it out for you real quick, David Crockett. I never claimed to have the gift of gab that Dusty Rhodes had. I have never claimed to be as handsome a man as Magnum TA is. I have never claimed to have that fire and intensity and downright stubbornness that Manny Fernandez has. But the one thing that I do claim to have is to be an Anderson, to be a winner, to have that intensity, to have what it takes to do what I have to do to reach the means. I, I uh, I don't know, man. I, I think you're getting better and better on promos every week. It feels more and more Oli esque, which I know, you know, was a compliment when I say it. Shit. I'm honored that, that, that thought even went into your head, much, much less out of your mouth. It's a tough act to follow with Oli, but it's a challenge as well. And there's there's something that went down in this particular promo. We could have went out and just talked about us. Yep. But but in those days, Dusty was a big star, and we took some time to put him over. Oli took some time to put him over, and more so, he took some time to put Ric Flair over. I took some time out of my promo to put all those guys over Yep. because the stronger you made your opponent and the bigger star that you helped make your opponent, then on those rare occasions, when you would get a win over that guy, you beat a superstar. And that's something that is lost today on promos. People want to, you know, go low road and they want to, you know, knock the guy and say that he's not this, or he's too little, or he's, this or that, the other, instead of making them a superstar in your eyes to the public, you know that you're in the challenge for your life. You know that you're going to be in the fight of your life. This guy has these attributes and this attribute and this attribute. And pretty soon, if I'm saying he's a big star and you're in the audience, you're going, well, he must be because he sure is speaking highly of him. Promotion would, uh, finish up their year here, December 30th. So you guys had new year's Eve off, but before we get there, I want to mention, uh, promos of course are going to air on TV on the 28th. So one week after what we just saw, we would see you in singles action against Gene Ligon uh, on mid Atlantic, but then we have the Andersons do a promo with Mr. Flair. Let's take a listen to that. This is December 28th. Belly to belly suplexes on the Jeffers, the winner, Megan PA and Dusty Rose. Thing I've ever seen in my entire life. 
first of all, it shows you the mentality of the folks here in South Carolina if they can be insulted by two guys walking out there because they want to call themselves America's team. Now, Bob, you see this right here? You see this right here? Only he's got three or four of them at home. They're called championship wrestling belts worn by qualified athletes like ourselves. And for Dusty Rhodes and Magnum TA, in their own shy, bashful way only, they come out here and proclaim themselves America's team without getting in the ring with the three of us. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, Bob. That's like Duke trying to tell Dean Smith that they're going to jump on the tower here, brother. Uh, let's be serious. Tell it, Rock. The thing that I saw that you apparently haven't paid any attention to is that there were two men in the ring at the same time. I'm talking about Dusty Rhodes and Magnum T.A. If you saw an Anderson do it right away, you'd be calling Bob Geigel. You'd be getting Jimmy Crockett down here. You'd be looking at the rules committee for the NWA. You'd be showing that film about 45 times, and you'd say, here's an example of double teaming. Here's an example of where the Andersons have to resort to have two men in the ring at the same time to beat one man. Now, if Dusty Rhodes does it, and Magnum TA does it, well, then it's all fine. It's all peaches and cream, and nobody says anything. Well, what are you going to say about it, Bob Cottle? You don't have anything to say about it. Oh, you yeah, know why? They had because two what they did is absolutely illegal. And when they do it, it's okay. If we do anything like that, it's not okay. Well, that's why I like those bunkhouse stampede matches, because everybody gets in the ring, and nobody has any complaint when they get beat. Oh, except for America's team. They're the only team that I know that's so great, that's so invincible, never lose a match. They don't have a belt to show for it. They don't have anything. Hey. They try to show pieces of film where they've beaten people. They doctored up some film and they put it together. And if you live them long enough, they'll probably beat the whole world on film. But right here, when we're standing and talking, you don't see them. You don't see them because we're the best there is. We're the family of champions. Bob, let me take time to introduce the new world television champion, Arnold Anderson. The belt is his. Woo! Fans, we'll see you next week. And until then, so long for now. Man, I don't know. It was something cool about seeing uh, most of the horsemen there together. And uh, what a fitting way for us to sort of wrap up 1985. Uh, he's of course, plugging that bunkhouse stampede. We're going to see that on the worldwide show that same weekend. I think it'll be the first time it was actually aired, but man, you got to feel pretty good. You know, we, we took our time and, and talked through uh, when you first came into the promotion in 84, but now we've built through all of 1985. When you look back all these years later, it's your 1985. Would you change anything? Or happy with the way it worked out. Someone was looking over me and watching over me and guiding me um, because I feel like I came a, a long way with a lot of help from a lot of people in a short time. Something to of note for that week from like Christmas Eve to like uh, New Year's Eve that week, that was the biggest business week of the year because all the kids were out of school. All the houses were packed. So going into the end of that first year, we actually were going to get a day off. That was exciting. New Year's Eve. And uh, more importantly, business was on fire. And 86 looked like, holy shit, man, sky's the limit. It's going to be good.